Welcome back to Giants.com. John Schmelk, Sean O'Hara with this week's game report. The Giants fall to the San Diego Chargers out there in California, 37-14. to And Sean, for the last seven games, the Giants have played good football. But this game was reminiscent of those first six games of the season where this team really struggled on both sides of the ball. Yeah, they did. And, and, and the offense, you know, it reared its ugly head again. The turnovers, the lack of production. And for the Giants, I mean, coming into this football game, I have to imagine their mentality was we want to start fast. We're on the road. Take the crowd out of it. And they did just the opposite. In the first half, their possessions went something like this. Punt, interception, punt, punt, another turnover. That's and not good for the It's record, not a good no. start. And, and the defense, I mean, you can only ask your defense to bail you out for so long. I mean, when I think back to the four-game win streak that the Giants went on, their defense was stellar. They kept people out of the end zone. The offense wasn't fantastic, but it was the fact that the defense stopped the other team from scoring points. They can only do that for so long, and at some point, the offense has to step up. It didn't happen for the Giants. You know, over the course of these last six or seven games, they've played really some of the bottom-feeding defenses in the league. Same thing against the Chargers. They were ranked in the bottom five in the league. But this offense, especially the passing game, just can't seem to get going. John, it's a great point. I mean, coming into this game, the San Diego Chargers were giving up 6.6 .6 yards per play, most in the NFL. So you would have thought it was a great formula and a great recipe for the New York Giants offense to take advantage of. That didn't happen. It wasn't the case. And really, this team has struggled to play complementary football all season long. Now, talking to Justin Tuck after the game, he said to me that he felt like the defense was missing that little something that really made them so good the last six or seven games. Did you sense that, or was it simply just a lack of execution? I just don't think that this defense is as physical as we thought they were going to be coming into the game. I don't think offenses look at this defense like they used to and say, how are we going to stop this player? How are we going to stop the physical play of this entire front? And, and I think that's really what we saw and what's been missing from this, this defense. And now these final three games, meaningless in terms of the playoffs, the Giants are eliminated, but there is going to be a lot of evaluation for yeah. these players, a lot of guys on the last years of their contract. I'm not sure. Were you ever a part of a season in your time here at the Giants where at this point of the year you guys had been eliminated or well, not? Well, my first year in 2004. In 04, you were uh, here for that. Okay, yeah, I wasn't we, sure if you were. Yeah, we finished 6-10, and 10, and, you know, it really is It's a gut check. A moment, you know, when you realize you're not playing for the playoffs because when every season starts, that is your goal. Every team's goal is to make the playoffs because we all know what it can happen when you get hot at the right time. You can go on and win Super Bowls. But when that doesn't happen, now for the players, I mean, this is really the gut check time when you find out, okay, I'm playing, as you said, for my job. I'm playing for my NFL life. I'm also playing for the guy next to me. And this is where you hear a lot of players talk about the brotherhood. It's about playing for the other guys in that locker room because I'm still counting on you. And if I'm a quarterback dropping back the pass to throw the ball, I'm counting on you to protect me just like I do all year long. So, you know, players, they have to go into this, these games with that same mentality. We're still playing for our brothers. And then included in that brotherhood circle, I would include the coaches because coaches and players spend so much time together. These last few games, they're very important because – a lot of coaches' jobs depend on them as well. So the evaluation process, it doesn't start and stop with just the players. The coaches are involved as well. Sean, appreciate the time as always, my friend. All right, thanks, John. That's all the time we have for the game report right here on Giants.com. For Sean O'Hara, I'm John Schmelk. We'll see you next time right here on Giants.com.